Who gets in my shop today? One of my favorites. You know what I want to know? When you're flooring, you want to make sure that eight barrels open up, full throttle, kick in and go. That's, That's what, what I want. That's what I want. Not like, ah, you want, oh, 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 go, like that. Welcome, and I'm Nick from Nick's Garage, and look what I've got in my shop today. Yes, this is a dream car, you guys. This is a 1971 Hemi Cuda, which is a very special car because in the American muscle car world, you guys know this is an icon. This is something very special. Okay, this is not the real thing, but the next best thing is exactly what this gentleman has over here from Barry, Ontario. Mike, the car's owner, knows that original Hemi Cudas sell for millions of dollars. So rather than rob a bank, he worked hard and built his own from a 340 car. He built this car from scratch. He put a Hemi in it, he put a four-speed in it, and uh, he, you know, enjoys driving it. But the thing is, we have some issues with the engine. This is why it's here. And we have a little bit of a stalling problem, idle problem, we don't know. But it came in yesterday afternoon, it was trailer here from uh, Barry, Ontario, and we started to work on it. So we took apart the rear carburetor, we worked on the floats that were too high, we did some jet changes, we looked at the butterflies, make sure they're working good, and so forth. So we noticed that the spark plugs were black, so we had to order some spark plugs. So I got some this morning, and I wanted to continue onto the car today. We're gonna show you guys the car later on, but I want to introduce you to the owner of the car from Barry, Ontario. Mike, this is your Cuda. Yes. Beautiful car you got here. Thank you, Nick. How many years have you had it? I've had this car about 10 years now. 10 years? And Brian is the man who brought it here for you from uh, Ontario? Yes. How are you? Thank so, you. So you had it that many years, eh? Yes. And of course, you're a body man. I am a body man. And he did the body work all by himself. That's right. So. Um, and uh, I can't thank you enough, Nick, for... Uh, taking me in I know you're a very busy man and I knew that I have to bring this car to you to have this car fixed I haven't drove this car because I'm probably doing more damage to the engine having it not run properly and I know that you will have this car running so I will be able to enjoy it we're gonna do our best because you know sometimes I don't know I didn't build this engine or the carburetors or anything like that but I have to look at every uh scenario because you know it could be ignition problem, could be a cam problem, can it be a vacuum leak, carburetor issue, I do not know. So we're gonna get started. We're gonna see. The thing is we have a rough idle stumbling and running very rich. So let's get started. We'll start by just changing the spark plugs and then we'll take it from there. Having a 1971 Hemi Cuda with billboard graphics back in his shop is reminding Nick of years gone by when he and his brother owned and raced a Cuda with a mean reputation in the streets of Montreal. I've had a 71 Hemi Cuda, a real Hemi Cuda for 27 years, sassy grass green with an automatic transmission matching number. I've had it for 27 years with my brother Phil and we enjoyed it. We used to do some street racing with it and uh, we had a great time with it. And now seeing this brings me back a lot of memories. But you know, it's always good, you know, and you know, we had the car for so many years, then we had it back with the original engine put back in. And then, you know, we decided to sell it because, you know, we weren't using it anymore. We had other cars. And then, you know, today it's worth a lot of money. But doesn't matter. Let's enjoy life and uh, continue what we're doing. This is what my passion is here for. And you know what? No matter what I do, I keep seeing Hemi's all the time. For you people that don't know much about the American muscle cars, the 71 Cuda is one of the favorites. It's also one of the rarest cars, especially a convertible. Now, if this was a convertible, which only... I believe the seven units were built. They're in the $5 million mark, like four to $5 million mark. The next best thing is a hard top like this one here. They're worth big bucks too. But you know what? This has a special, uh, a special uh, uh, icon uh, passion in the Mopar world because a lot of people love the E-Body, especially the 71 Cuda. You know, some people, some people love them, some people hate them, but this is a favorite car, the 71. So it's got the right color. It's got the billboard decals, which this car came with a 340 
which is also a rare car. And the gentleman also has a 340 engine for it. But in the meantime, he's gonna leave it with the Hemi right now, with the four speed, with the black vinyl top. And the best part, check out the billboards on the side of the car. Now that is awesome. This is something unique. You know, I'm always used to working Hemi's on the dyno, but this one is gonna be built. I mean, this one's gonna be tuned in the car, so we're gonna do our best with it. You know, it's, I noticed a few issues with it, but you know what? Let's work on it. Let's get it going. After all, he came a long way from Ontario just to get this car tuned here by myself. And uh, I hope I don't get this through with other customers today. So let's focus on this today. So once we took out our, uh, not exactly the number I want, I usually use the uh, NGKs, the uh, BPR60S, they work for me. With the cast iron head with the factory compression ratio, so they work fine, and this is what we're gonna use right now. We just pulled out the plugs. This has got an RN12YC spark plug made by Champion, but we're not gonna go with that. If you guys see, they're black, they're carbonized, so I wanna get a, I wanna put in a fresh set of plugs so I can start tuning it. After all, we can't get the RPM stable. We know we don't know if we have a vacuum leak or we have a carburetor issue, but we have to start with eight new plugs and uh, what's the work we can do. Hey, all of you viewers that uh, don't know what a Hemi is, this is the way this car came from the factory. Not this particular car, but when Chrysler built these Hemi Cudas, this is what they had. They had a shaker hood, which is standard equipment on a Hemi car with two full barrels, 426 cubic inch. Hydraulic flat top head camshaft, and there it is. Uh, I haven't really drove this car too much because of the performance of the way it's ran. And uh, I'd rather bring it to somebody that actually knows what they're doing on these. They're a unique motor and uh, you need the right person to set this motor up. So 10 and years I'm, this has been sitting in your garage and you haven't been able to really enjoy it? Yes. Well, we're going to change that. Yes. How many miles have you put on it, Mike? Probably about 500 miles. 500 miles? Since the motor was rebuilt. Okay. See, they come out so rich. This is because the car is running way too rich, too much fuel. So we're gonna change the plugs and hopefully we'll get this thing adjusted the way it should be. And all 426 semi engines, when you take out a plug or when you do a tune up or you change the eight spark plugs, the moment you start it up right after that, you're gonna have a puff of smoke. That's because the oil that sits in the tube where the spark plug sits, it fills up with the oil, but not inside the spark plug, but only where the area of the spark plug is. So we're gonna see a puff of smoke when we get it started. That's gonna be absolutely normal. Within minutes after that, it's gonna disappear. You know, I ordered the, I ordered the plugs this morning. My brother had them in stock. Of course, Nick, I know you always need something for a Hemi. So I had them in stock, so no problem there. Mike, you can work on the car too. Uh, if you wish, don't worry about it. It's your car after all. Mike doesn't need to be asked twice and jumps right in to help out Nick by loosening the power brake booster and getting access to those rear spark plugs. You miss racing? Uh, yeah, you could say that. Too busy to go now, probably. Summers are short. I'm always here in the shop on the weekends. You know, I like to go racing once in a while, but this year I wasn't lucky. I didn't have enough time. I'll make time next year. Do you miss street racing in your Hemi car? Yeah, that, that, the street racing I do miss. Yeah. But nowadays, we don't do that. We don't race, we go to the track to go racing. Yeah, this, this car should bring me back memories, man. I 
I've had a few uh, 70 Hemicudas come into my shop, but 71, this is the first one in my new shop here that I have in Laval. And some of you are asking if this Hemi has headers. No, it's got exhaust manifolds, my favorite. Mike, you know what we're gonna have to check? I wanna make sure you got a nice blue spark. Make sure it's not yellow. I have to look at everything because I didn't build this, so I gotta make sure. Now changing that last spark plug on the other side is not gonna be an easy task. You know, the uh, wiring cables for the spark plugs, when they come from the factory, the boot is flexible. On all the other seven cylinders, hard as uh, solid, like this. But in this case, this one's not flexible. I'll show you one in a few seconds. I'll go get you one to uh, show to you guys that to help you remove it while the booster is in place. But in this case, Mike's gonna pull over the booster to the side so we get to the plug. You know, if you go back in the day, this is luxury because look at my Challenger, my Kowalski Challenger. It came with a factory with drum brakes, manual brakes, no power steering. So what have I done to it is I converted to disc brakes with power and I also installed power steering, but I kept the four speed. If you're wondering how Mike spent 10 years with this gorgeous car and only put 500 miles on it, Remember that he also has a 1968 Charger RT with a 440 and a 4 speed that he drives more regularly, having built it back to a beauty from a pile of twisted metal. Looking for a flexible uh, uh, spark plug tube. One that flexes. Here we go. Yeah, this is what he needs. You see? What originally comes is something solid like this for Hemi. But what you need is one of these. I see. If you want to put it on right now, it's the time. Beautiful. There you go. Thank you, Jack. I'm sure there's no shop in Montreal that's going to have that in stock, that's for sure. Okay. But the wire you got there is 8 millimeter, am I correct? Yes. That's going to have to need some custom work. Okay, so I have 7 mil wire. Spares. Yeah, these are, these are 8 millimeter? Yes. I have a spare. Oh, you do? Okay. You don't have to kill yourself taking out the boost all the time. It works. I, I run seven millimeter wires on my heavy. They don't have any issues. No? No, no, no. When you want a heavy current at thick, you have a lot of voltage, uh, high compression, you need big spark. Yes, you put a thicker wire cable for the uh, spark plug. But for a street cruiser, you don't need that. No. You want me to change it for you? Yes, please. Okay. Okay, so see, this is a solid piece. You know, as you're pulling it out of the tube from the valve cover, it's so hard to remove because the massive cylinder is in the way or the power brake booster. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna install this new sleeve, which is flexible, so when next time Mike wants to change the plug, he doesn't have to remove the power brake booster. Just pull it out at an angle and voila. So I'm gonna cut it up, okay? No problem, here we go, let's get it done. Let's see, let's see if it goes in now with the booster in place. You know, there's a way to remove the spark plug with the booster in place. You know how you do it? With two universals like this, Yes. with a two inch extension, and then you pull it out slowly without removing the booster for the spark plug. And with the wire, I think it should work. Okay, I think we're ready to start it. Yeah. 
connect the battery. Get rid of the spark plug. Okay, I'll play with the gas, you. I'll turn her over. Okay, sounds good. Make sure it's in neutral. Okay, here we go. Okay, Nick. You're gonna see a puff of smoke in the back torch. Okay. Something's, something's wrong with the rear carburetor. I'm gonna take it off again, but I, went, I need to warm it up to make some adjustment. As soon as you get off the idles, idle, it wants to stall. But let's warm it up so I can do some adjustment. Clean out the cylinders. I'm gonna give it a few minutes to warm up and then we'll see. I think we have an issue with the uh, rear primary carburetor, so we're going to have to remove it and look and see what's going on inside. But in the meantime, maybe just take a look at it, warm it up, burn out all the fuel, burn out the oil that we took out from when we removed the spark plugs, and we'll take it from there. You know when the thermostat's open, when you feel hot air coming from here, you know the thermostat opened up. Really? Without touch. Yeah, yeah. You guys look, it's blowing cold air. Good. See now it's warming up. Watch the fan, watch the fan. When it gets warm, you know the uh, thermostat. That's right. You know when you have no choke, you need a rich mixture to get it started. What I do when I get it started is you got the choke pipe open or you don't have every little piece for it. You don't have the heat pipe. You eliminate it, you leave it open, but you gotta give it gas in the morning. I see. Like uh, I have a guy from uh, Detroit, retired carburetor guy. Okay. Cause Nick, why you always block up the heat? I say we want to keep the intake as cool as possible. Yeah, but it's not meant to be like that. I know, <laughs> but then you have a hard time Warming up the vehicle. I know. Well, I know. Sorry.
the handle. It looks ugly. You move, get rid of it. You see, Mike, come and see this. Yes, sir, remember I was holding it part throttle, it was stalling? Yes. Look at this. Oh, I couldn't do that yesterday, yeah. you see? Wow. You see, with a little bit of load, yeah. we had a misfire, it kept stalling. But uh, we'll never warm it up, we'll do the best we can. Exhaust manifold gasket? Pardon? When you do an exhaust manifold gasket, yes. which gasket do you use? Uh, use Felpro, I'll show you. Yes, that's the one you, use. you do? Yes. Then you, after when it runs, re, after it cools down the next day, re tighten it again. Okay. Because uh, what happens is the gasket, when it gets hot, cold, hot, cold, it shrinks. Okay. Then you think the bolts are loose, they're not, they're not loose, so then you re tighten it. Oh. Squeeze the gasket again so you don't blow it again. Okay? okay? Same thing with headers, same thing with exhaust manifold. I'd love to drive it. That's I'd awesome. love to drive it. It's got to be raining. But now what I'm going to look at is uh, we have a steady RPM. Rev it up a few times like we did last night and we had all kinds of idle uh, issues, right? Yes, so right. we're going to warm it up, let it run. We're going to rev it up a few times. I want to see if it could stay at the same RPM level after all these tests. So uh, we've done these spark plugs, we've lowered the uh, floats on both carburetors yesterday afternoon, and now I just want to play with the air fuel ratio on idle. The timing is good, it's locked in, that's all good. The only thing I gotta look at is taking it for a drive. Well, hopefully it stops raining, maybe I'll take it for a drive later on. But in the meantime, let's see if the idle stays up. Yes. Mike, you know the car better than me. You put the gas from inside. You, you, you know it better than I do. You tell me uh, you see any difference. You know you're gonna feel that misfire or anything like that. That's amazing. You see with the lighter spring, it's easier, right? Eh? That's amazing. Yeah. What do you think? That's unbelievable. This car has never ran this good. This car has never ran this good, even after the dyno. Nick, you're amazing. My car, I got it around 950. My Kowalski four speed. Yes. I want to do the same for you. Thank you. So it feels better than yesterday? Oh, this car has never ran this good. No? Never. Now all we need to do is take it for a road ride. Or should I say the uh, next road test? That's it. Nice drive, you know, simple test, you know. Give her a next road test. You know what I want to know? When you floor it, you want to make sure that eight barrels open up, full throttle, kick in and go. That's, that's what, what I want. That's what I want. Not like, ah, you want, oh, oh go like that after all it is a hemi it's a four speed you know you want to feel the guts not just a, like a cruiser you want to flow it kick it beat it after all it is a muscle car come on you guys you it is a to. cuda it's got to bring some memories back let me tell you okay At 900, 920, okay, let's see now. If I turn it off, we'll see if it runs on.
So Mike the Cuda Kid finally got his Hemi Cuda running the way it should, thanks to a little help from Nick's garage. And Mike's luck continues to be good on this day. A few hours later, after some delicious turkey sandwiches that Mike and Brian brought in, the weather is looking better outside the shop, and Nick is ready for a test drive. It seems like the uh, rain has stopped for a while. I know the streets are wet, but you know what? I gotta take it for a drive before uh, Mike takes it home. But I just gotta feel the pedal works. I wanna see if it stumbles, accelerates, and how it goes. So, let's take it for a little drive, shall we? are 10 years old, and there are delivery vans all over the place. Nick is being extra careful with the Hemi Cuda as he warms up the engine with one eye on the gauges and both ears on that elephant under the hood.
That's awesome. It's the way to do it. See the wheel hop? That's good. That's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> now it's starting to sound like a hemi. Yeah. <laughs> to bring it in. I'm gonna have to return it on the uh, primary jet, so uh, that's a little stumble when I accelerate at low speed. So we're gonna bring it in, take up the car, be put in the bigger jets, and then uh, it should be fine. All right, back in the shop. Here we go. I gotta fix. You know when you're cruising and you just want to press a little bit, that's a little hesitation. Yeah. I think I need to put a thinner rod or we go to a bigger jet on the rear car. But I remember yours were 47s, right? I'm gonna see if I have thinner rods. Instead of going to a bigger jet, I'm going to put thinner rods. This is a 47 okay. on the tip where it goes through the jet, and that's a 37 thou. That's a 47 thou. That's a 37 thou. So what it does is it reaches your uh, your uh, low speed uh, acceleration. So this is what we do: take this off, like so. Put it there. Put this here, and then that's it. There we go. Done. Now we'll go back. Man. Try it again, take these gaskets, keep them on the table. That's why I like to drive the car before I give it to a client. Let's do the same for the driver's side now. I had that same stumble on my car, so then I had to reach it out on the primaries. Then I'll watch the place like so. You see it's spring loaded, you see it? I see, I see. Okay. All right, here we go. Let's take another drive. Here we go. You know, there's nothing like taking a final ride to make sure it goes good before I pass it on to a client.
more stumbles, so I'll let, I'm gonna let my client try it out. Mike, I want you to drive it. Okay. You're good, man. You, you wanna come in? Come in. We'll go for a ride. Okay. Come on. There's no way I would shift it. I'm not power shifting, I'm just uh, no, I know. I just want you to watch. Every time I want to push it, something wants to come in my way. I'm looking for stumble things like that, or if it's pinging, you know? Yeah, yeah. Just gonna take it easier. Because, you know, just let's say now you're regular driving, right? Yeah, yes. I'll show you something. This is where you're gonna drive. It's not a race car, right? That's right, that's right. Good. You drive like this? Yeah. Feel that. Look, now you press it lightly. Yeah. You can feel the second there's opening up. Yeah. See how that's almost stumble. Yeah. Beautiful. That's unbelievable. Now put the second gear now. You got four mufflers on this car. What's that? Four mufflers. Four mufflers, yes. Four, right? Yeah. Check one more thing after this. If we got full throttle, I forgot to mention that. Remember we took off the rod yesterday? Yes. And then all those, the idle is the same now. You notice? Yes. Now see, look, if we're driving normal, yeah, there's yeah, no stumble. Yeah. Even though we're throwing, that's you're not freaking. That's then amazing. Then you put second gear, look, low RPM, yeah, give yeah, it yeah, gas. Yeah, look, yeah. see? <laughs> see it on. I just want to see now. It picks in first gear. Yeah. Usually on a weekend, I can I can go all the way up. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll try it one more time. Yes. And I want to make sure the gas pedal doesn't get stuck on the floor. Right. I want to make sure the RPM is always in the same place. Yes. Doesn't ping. Doesn't stall. Did you see any black smoke anywhere? No. Okay. First couple of passes. Yeah, you we have to clean out. Yeah. We have to clean out the exhaust system. Yeah, it's full in, in the chambers and you know. There we go. And now you can feel gas pedal, you know. Yes. You know what that is? What? You need the rubber insulator from the brewers. Is that what that is? Yeah, I'll, I'll give you the details. It's got a big bang, eh? Yeah, it's good. Do you have a snubber on it? Uh, you have a Dana? No, I took oh. the Dana out. I'm gonna put it back in. Where you go? What gear ratio you got? Uh, three seven threes. Three seven threes. Okay, there we go. Awesome. All right. So let's go for the Unbelievable. Shaker. Thank you very very much, Nick. You're welcome. This is a totally different car. This is the car that I was supposed to have done and put all my hard effort into, and finally I brought it to the right guy to make that happen. Thanks again. It's my pleasure, Mike. My pleasure. Okay, let's go put the shaker back on. <laughs> So there you have it, folks. Another day, another muscle car legend at Nick's Garage. And you guys, if you look down below the video, we have a whole bunch of merchandise that you guys can buy. So whatever you like, buy it, love it, wear it, and enjoy it. And help spread the word of Nick's Garage. And if you have some time, check out our Patreon page. We have extra content, and you guys can watch it and take it from there. And we'll see you next time.